the Prime Minister took a risk in overhauling the Stage 3 tax cuts. And unfortunately for him, according to polls out today, it doesn't look like it's worked. Labor's primary has fallen again in the latest news poll, down to 33%. That was where it was when Labor won last time. It was a record low primary for the Labor Party. And for the first time since the election, the coalition has overtaken Labor in the Herald's Resolve poll. This after border security and boats have been back in the news big time. And the timing couldn't be worse for the PM ahead of the Dunkley by-election this Saturday. Albanese is expected to win it, but if he doesn't, his leadership will be in serious trouble. Well, to discuss this, joining me now, former Chief of Staff to Bill Shorten and now current Director at GXO Strategies, Cameron Milner, and the Australian's National Affairs Editor, Joe Kelly. Welcome to you both. Look, Cameron, what do you think these two polls out today show about the gamble of the changes to the Stage 3 tax cuts? Or do you think they're more a reflection of the major problems on border security that Labor's had over the past couple of weeks? Well, the numbers are terrible for Labor because it goes right back to Groundhog Day, which was the worst primary that Labor had recorded ever in terms of trying to win elections. So it's, it's the last 18 months have been zeroed off. But it's all about, I think, the, about the Prime Minister's broken promise. It's about the fact that the electors can't trust his word any longer. Uh, this guy went and promised a lot and broke his word to buy the stage three tax cuts to win the Dunkley by-election. Uh, the Dunkley by-election is critical for Labor. Uh, and this Saturday is a crucial moment in terms of what's going to happen for the next 12 to 15 months of electoral politics. Uh, because if the La if Labor Party wins, if the Prime Minister wins Dunkley and shows there's no cost to lying, mm. Dunkley will give him a licence to lie about a lot more. Joe, what do you think about this? What do you think the news poll today says about Labor's fortunes and, and, and what are you expecting on Saturday? Well, look, Sherry, I'd be concerned if I was Anthony Albanese about a couple of things the polls are showing. So, uh, firstly... I'd be aware that the polls show that there's majority support for my tax cut revamp. That's shown by uh, the news poll a couple of weeks back and also by Resolve Today. Uh, we know that about 86% of Australians will get a larger tax cut. It's about 10.8 million Australians. So despite the fact that 86% of the country that works will be left better off by the Stage 3 tax revamp, uh, Labor's position in the polls uh, has not improved. They've got no bump. So I'd be concerned about that fact if mm. I was Anthony Albanese. Um, I would also be uh, concerned if I was Anthony Albanese uh, about the fact that if he does have a poor performance in the Dunkley by-election, if he goes on to lose, not only are there questions about his personal leadership, he did obviously mishandle the voice referendum last year, this will be yet another blow but he damages the entire stage three tax cut policy. It will be seen as a complete dud. It will be seen as an electoral bomb. Uh, now, the stage three tax cuts don't come into effect until July. Mm. So there's a lot riding on this Dunkley by-election. And I think it, the polls show um, some concerning trends for Anthony Albanese. Look, Cameron, clearly the PM is worried about things are going for him, uh, even how his own office is running um, and the advice that he's been receiving because he's hired uh, David Epstein, you know, Kevin Rudd's uh, former senior advisor. Also, Fiona Sugden, who also once worked for Rudd, and then Catherine Murphy from The Guardian. So, you know, you've got to wonder what this means about how Albanese is trusting the advice that he's been receiving from his office to this point. Well, we know at the end of last year when the numbers were terrible that things were tense in his office. He was losing staff all over the place. Some staff referred to him as Yelbo, not Albo. But bringing in three very senior that political operators... That is hilarious. I me. haven't heard that before. You're saying his staff call him <laughs> no, Yel Yelbo. Yelbo, Yelbo. Because Yelbo, he, shout Yelbo I, he shouts. Was what they were calling him. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Tr shrill shouting about the situation. But bringing in three very senior operators says to me that he wasn't trusting the advice he'd received for the last two years. Because you don't bring in a former Chief of Staff, Chief of Staff to the Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, as some sort of uh, advisor on the side. You bring him in for another form of, form of advice. And David Epstein's excellent. Excellent. Uh, but he'll be giving counter-advice to Tim Gartrell, to, to Catherine Murphy, to Fiona Sugden, 
um, because that's what they've brought in in terms of the number of chiefs in the room uh, giving advice to the Prime Minister now. Mm. I mean, we're talking about this advice. Um, I spoke earlier in the night about this piece that it, Christopher Dawes just written where it, it says that the Prime Minister completely ignored those advising him uh, against having a voice referendum and, and they all seemed to know it was a risky mistake, but he went ahead with it anyway. Um, you know, Joe, but also that anecdote's kind of hilarious because Anthony Albanese seems like such a relaxed person you know, everything I've ever seen of him, and, and I did have a lot to do with him when I was political editor for the Daily Telegraph in Canberra, I, I've never kind of heard that he has a bad temper, but but yet his nickname, is, as Cameron Milner's just revealed, is apparently Yelbo. Joe, you know, do you hear stories that align with this? Um, I think there's a, a certain amount of pressure uh, and exposure uh, once you take on the top job in the country. Uh, it's a transformative uh, role. Uh, and we see lots of cases of uh, people who uh, come into roles uh, and sometimes they exceed expectations, sometimes they underperform. Uh, being prime minister of the country is obviously uh, being, you know, exposed to those forces of, of extreme pressure. So uh, I think uh, things that perhaps you wouldn't expect um, anomalies of character are exposed in those sorts of situations. But in relation to the voice the story that you outlined mm. before, uh, I think certainly on election night, uh, Anthony Albanese wanted to make this uh, a personal symbol of, of his own uh, leadership, his own brand. Um, and I think this was just the start of many mistakes uh, in essentially what will be a textbook case of how to tank a referendum.